अजीज तलबा असलम इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन द जर्नी ऑफ लैंग्वेज एक सेकेंड सो इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन द डिफरेंस बिटवीन मदर टंग and language and the difference between national and international language the function of uh, grammar is number 1 expression number 2 standardization to fix the standard of the language so that it is written all over the world from australia to america and the world in between in the same way in their own countries they make some changes according to their uh, traditions new zealand and australia speak different english but in so far as the writing of english is concerned there is no difference this is international language. to bring language to this standard is the work of grammar third function of grammar is to avoid errors errors of expression you know what kind of errors can a student commit to as we have gone through the various uh, methods of uh, translation so we have seen the different rules there is a uh, is simple tense and active tense and passive tense and then to complete this business of tenses there is information about finite and infinite words well we shall go through these uh, rules now once again and uh, this uh, series of lectures has been designed for the students of english medium schools so after the functions of grammar and the methods of expression you see methods of expression simple tense active tense passive tense and transitive and intransitive verbs what is the difference between the two and what error can we commit while we are using them we shall take them up one by one in detail c 
सिंपल ओके फ्रेजेस एंड ईडियम्स एंड ब्यूटिफिकेशन ये दीज आर ऑल फॉर द ब्यूटिफिकेशन ऑफ लैंग्वेज यू वॉन्ट टू सी थिंग्स मोर एंड मोर ब्यूटिफुल सो इज द केस इज लैंग्वेज फ्रॉम वेयर द ब्यूटी कम्स फॉर लैंग्वेज फ्रॉम सिमिलीज मेटाफर्स एंड दीज आर जनरली फ्रॉम मोर इन पोइट्री एरिस्टॉटल सेल्स poetry is the invention of ever new metaphors they give you pictures words give you pictures hum to chale the ghar se khushi ki talash mein gham raah mein khade the वही साथ हुई नॉट जस्ट सी द सेकेंड वर्स प्योर इमेजिनेशन गम सॉरोस हैव नो बॉडी हाउ कैन दिस स्टैंड बट द पोइट से इज दिस स्टैंड दिस इज इमेजरी This is imagery, which makes the language pictorial. As you go through the words, a film is going on in your mind. Your eyes see words, and your mind converts them into pictures. more and more beautiful pictures read that verse again and again and try to understand what has happened in these two lines okay beautification and then we have to study parts of speech when we take up a sentence we see there is a subject there is a verb and there is an object this is the active order of sentences if we go to the passive voice the to the reverse is the situation we start the sentence with an object then comes a helping verb and then the principal verb in third form passive we'll come to it later on and we'll see the detail i'm just telling you what we are going to do here how we are going to learn the language mind you i remind i have reminded you again and again that we are learning grammar to learn english language we do not learn grammar only to cram the rules and regulations no as i gave you the example of a car you want to learn how to drive a car first you see the parts language is just like a practical art driving a car there are parts there is steering wheel there is steering the two positions where you have to put your left and right foot one on brake and the other on accelerator 
which increases the speed. You have to go through practice regularly so that these rules become a part and parcel of your mind. And your hands and feet and eyes automatically do what they are expected to do. This is the same case with language. These are the parts. But after learning the parts, you have not learned English language. No. You have seen the tools, the parts. Here is subject and then a verb and then an object. Active. Object plus helping verb plus principal verb plus subject. Passivus. So, rules of making sentences. In this lecture, we'll see simple forms of principle one. Is Kagia Pring Yarkering? Who Yarkan? It's just to learn. Read again and again. Write down the three forms of word. In so far as the simple tense is concerned, there is no principal word which has three forms. Here we use only helping word. There are two types of simple. One, the forms of be, which make a simple statement. This is a table. Is, I am your friend. And, she is very beautiful. B has eight forms. This is a very peculiar word in English language. No other word has so many forms. Only three forms. It has eight forms. B, being, being. Three, is, am, are, was, were. Five. Three plus five, eight forms. And they make a simple statement which conveys the meaning of being. Which conveys the meaning of being, ha, ha, tha, te, thi. Will be, shall be, hoga. It will be there. Salim will be at Lahore. Understand? This is the first form of simple. The second type of simple sentences is made by has, have, had, which give the meaning of possession. I have a good house. He has a very good story book. He, were, he had a good garden, a good storybook, 
have has had meaning in urdu you say uske paas he has he has he had uske paas tha he will have uske paas hoga kya he will have a good friend uske paas ek acha dost hoga this is the second form of simple well after simple we have active passive i have also told you the arrangement of uh, active and passive then comes transitive and intransitive verbs it is very necessary to know the difference between the transitive verbs and intransitive verbs otherwise you will commit errors at every step so it is very very important to know the difference between the two then finite and infinite verbs finite and infinite limited unlimited what are the finite and infinite verbs which are its forms which meaning it conveys we are going to learn that at its turn i'm just going to introduce you to the different type of sentences the order of words and the meaning it's just the introduction after that we'll take them one by one and i will tell you in detail what they do as you do how to use your left foot and your right foot when you are at the steering wheel of the car after learning these rules you will not learn the language mind you you have to learn these rules very well because you have to use them again and again in different sentences but you have not yet learned to write english language correctly this time will come when you have all these rules in your mind and then you use them in practice when you start the car you have to take care of your feet left right if you put the left foot on the other side there will be an accident instead of stoppage the car will not stop when you have press the left hand accelerator it will run faster and faster as you go on changing the gears and then you have to control it if you don't you have an accident similarly when you write the language in keeping these rules in your mind 
you will go on writing the language correctly. You will satisfy your examiner because you are to get marks from him. You are not sitting there before the examiner. He is just looking at your paper, at your answer paper. From there he will judge how you have learned the rules. From your sentences, not a list of rules. No. You have nowhere to write these rules. You have to learn the language with the help of the rules. If you don't learn them, you will commit errors. And as your errors increase, so your marks decrease. This is the importance of grammar. Never think that you are learning grammar for its own sake. If you do so, it will be wastage of time and energy. And we cannot afford to do that. Our time and energy should be spent on something which is necessary and important, rather essential. Then comes models. Models are the words which help you to make different kind of sentences. Models, will, shall, would, should, may, might, must. These are models. He came to me. If he came to me, I would help him. No, you cannot write will here. Why? Past follows past. That is the rule. If the first part of the sentence is past, you cannot have present or future after it. They have also to go to past. Will, would, shall, should, is, was, has, had, and so on. This is also called the sequence of tenses. जब एक से ज्यादा फिक्रे इकट्ठे होते हैं मिलाए जाते हैं वट रूल्स आर कैप्ट इन माइंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट रूल पास्ट फॉलोज पास्ट एंड द अदर पार्ट कैन नॉट बी प्रेजेंट आर फ्यूचर we have to study these things in detail as we go on then the business of narration narration means to tell to tell something to make a statement and the statement is made in two ways. In Urdu, you don't bother about that as much as you do it in English. We use inverted comma 
to make a direct statement. He says, comma, in what it comma, start. I am in inverted comma close. This is the direct statement. Inverted comma tells us that these are not the words of this person. These are the words of somebody else. वो कहता है कि मैं बीमार दो तरह का आ जाए डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट ये डायरेक्ट वेन यू कम टू इनडायरेक्ट यू से सेज दैट ही इज एल You have to learn what changes are made when we go to indirect from direct expression. This is an addition. Two ways: direct and indirect. That is direct and indirect. so then come the different methods of expression after tenses we come to different ways of expression muscle example causative cause means way वे वे तुम कहते हो स्वभाव वजह तरीका मैथड एंड वेन वी यूज काजिटिव वॉट इज द नीड ऑफ काजिटिव काजिटिव इज Causative. In this case, I will this story. I will. read this story this is a simple ex expression main ye kahaniyon wali kitab padhu i will read this story he will punish you he will punish you wo tumhe saza dega when we want to say that he will not punish you but he will get you punished sazad dega ne 
इसका सबब बनेगा ही विल काज इट ही विल बिकम द वे डू कर अगर हमने कराना की मानी ले ली सजा देने की बजाय सजा दिलवाना वी हैव टू कर मे दीज मीनिंग इन द काजिटिव We shall say, he will get you punished. This is correct. Well, we shall read it in detail. I'm just. introducing you to the different methods of expression in english so that you have a picture of what we are going to learn there are as many sentences in english as in punjabi or urdu or any other language every language has its own rules and regulations you must remember that you are not to go to verbal translation is lahor in he these are four words is lahor in he do these four words give any sense no this is our word translation when we are going to say this in english it will not follow urdu rules the arrangement will be in keeping with english grammar he is in lahore this order of word is according to the english grammar and if somebody asks you to which kind of sentences this one belongs and you will say if you know the english grammar this is a simple simple one use of helping verbs which are the forms of be is am are was were have have had okay this is positive then there is conditional condition shall then there is imperative of come the khas then there is use of degrees of adjective for comparison and selection and the use of double degree what are the degrees of adjective what is adjective and what are the degrees of adjective and how they are used first degree second degree third degree they help us 
to compare or to select. Comparison and selection. Then there is habit. What are the kinds of habit and how they are replaced by English words? Habit. I have already told you, this is the order of words. Inactive. And this is the order of words in passive. Never put your pen on your exercise book without deciding. Without deciding here which method of grammar you are going to apply. If you make a wrong decision, you will make an error and the examiner will punish you. This is the importance of grammar. You have to force the examiner to give me, to give you as many marks as you expect. And for that, you have to avoid all kinds of errors. One of my lectures will be on the various kinds of error which you can commit when you are writing English. This will be a separate lecture. I will tell you how you make errors and how to avoid them. Correction. Many types of correction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty, about twenty. And you should know. So that you can avoid these errors and write English correctly. Well, this is an overall introduction to the English grammar. From here, after Keeping these things in your mind, you are going to practice. After learning the parts of car, I come to the same example. You have learned all the parts and their function. Now you are on your seat and have the steering wheel in your hand. And after starting the car, you are going to drive it and you have to remember where using your left foot, where your right foot, if you change them, you commit an error which may end up in an accident which will be harmful to yourself the people going on the road. Well, this much for today. And now, we will take, take these things lecture-wise. One by one. This is lecture one. What I was telling you yesterday is a part of this lecture. What is language? What is national language? What is international language? That was introduction. And this is the second part of that introduction. This is a part of that. So I include it in lecture one. Okay. That is for today.